episode 25 of the Mishmash podcast. And right away, you notice things are a little different. We're missing my wonderful co-host today. She'd usually say that. Throw it over to me for some goofy title. I don't have one right now. We are crazy busy, um, but all good. What we did have yesterday is a wonderful sit-down discussion with David and Allie from David McKay Academy. Uh, they are the photographers, uh, a couple, that host workshops and tours all over the world. Christine and I will be joining them on their Italy tour in October. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about them, about what they do. I've been talking about their tours some, but it's nice to hear directly from them. And it's, it's really clear from this interview you all are about to watch that they have a passion for photography. And I really, you know, I think one of the reasons why uh, so many of you have connected with me and Christina is our kind of patient um, and, you know, no-nonsense approach to teaching about photography and sharing with you all. And it's very similar, that, it's very apparent that they have a similar approach as well. So great discussion ranging from how to, uh, what kind of gear should you be taking on travel tours, uh, what kind of lenses that are their favorite as world travel photographers um, and portrait studio photographers as well, and Ali dabbles a little bit in an infrared. So you're gonna watch that. Next week, Christina and I will both be back here and we're gonna be doing some reviewing of questions we've asked you in the comments you've left. Episode 22, 23, 24, all had questions from us and wonderful responses from you all that I wanna talk a little bit about. Where do you see the future of photography going um, from the deep to the maybe pedantic, do you keep your boxes, to the controversial, do you still take sunset pictures and should you? As Christina maybe suggested, you shouldn't. We've had some great feedback on that um, and so we'll be talking more about that next week. So here's this interview of David and Allie right now. Thanks so much. Thank you both for uh, taking some time to do this. I know you guys are busy. You've been traveling like crazy. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to run through some questions that I think would be great for folks who are watching our podcast to Should um, I make this full hear. screen? Oh, yeah, make it full screen. That would be great. So first thing I just want to know is, is both of you are photographers. Um, how did you get started? And you all can choose who goes first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got started as a kid and then in high school got into a photography class and then really liked it and got involved in the yearbook staff and uh, just kind of, kind of grew from there. Two years yeah. ago, right? Two years <laughs> ago. Good job. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I, I actually, I started a studio right out of high school when I was uh, 18. Didn't know much about what I was doing, but I just loved photography. Went for it. I worked in a camera store in high school and uh, learned as I went. Allie went to like a, a college, you know, for photography, a trade school. She didn't tell you that, but she did. I learned as I went the hard way. And um, yeah, and then together we've been together. We've been married eight years. We both had separate studios. We used to refer each other all the time for weddings back when we did tons of weddings. We'd refer each other, so we knew each other for years. And then, anyway, here we are. <laughs> yeah, great. Do, do, do either of you, I mean, so this, it's very interesting that, Allie, you had kind of a very traditional, interested through high school, and, and you had experience in high school and training and then college that more. Either of you find that you have slightly different approaches because of the way you've approached photography as a whole, or you've both arrived at the same point? Um, well, I think that I tend to be a little more technical, um, but yet I'm an artist. Um, David's kind of more passionate. He kind of, that's the way he, he writes and he photographs. He just, it kind of flows and, and gets rolling, and, right? Yeah. She, she doesn't look like it, but she's a nerd. <laughs> and uh, it's true. It's really like our dynamic. We each have strengths, you know, and I'm sure you guys might see that in your own relationship and with your photography. And, you know, what we find is um, we build off of each other, though. So we might have a little different approaches. But if I come up with an idea, Allie might stair we call it stair stepping she might see that idea and then 
move into something else and then what she builds off of then I build off and it's been cool because uh, with our portrait work which we have a full-time studio um, you know I might start a posing process and then she might do something that builds into something else and it just kind of evolves and um, it's, it, Allie's really great at lighting as well you guys look good right now <laughs> 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 so when you put it together though it's been great as far as our you know our studio work and then uh, and i have to say honestly in our in our fine art work and you know having traveled so much now leading our, our classes on our courses around the world you know, both of us uh, you know we enter competition with professional photographers of america we both attained our master of photography um, which ali got a year before me <laughs> It was Master Alley for a year. Um, but, uh, you know, like, we'll run each other's work by, like, by people that we know and trust, but also by each other. And and uh, for me personally, um, Allie's got such an amazing compositional eye that I'll run stuff by her. And she's taught me more in the last eight years compositionally than I had ever learned, even though I achieved success. Sure. Um, it, it's been neat as a couple to to help each other out, you know? Yep. Yep. Nice. Yeah, never frustrating. Like, what was that last bit? And never frustrating. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Never. Never, yeah. never competitive. Yeah. That's that's good. That's good. Well, you, do you want to ask um, a little bit about tours? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Or did you have any follow up questions from from that discussion? I think I did, but I forgot. <laughs> okay. So. Um, so what brought you guys to start McKay Academy? And and actually, you know, I guess before we even get into that, um, you guys mentioned you run a full-time portrait studio. So I'm just curious how you guys seem unbelievably busy. So how do you guys, or maybe this is a question for later, but how do you guys balance all of that plus, like, life, which, you know, also takes up a ton of time, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from my perspective, can I just say that I think David, I get texts from you at all different hours. So yeah. I'm like, David is one of those guys that he's always working. Yeah. And that's how you are too, a little yeah, bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, we're, I think that we're evolving in that, to be honest. You know, we, we started. You know, you had asked about the academy. It actually kind of leads into each other how it started, you know, we, and how we're balancing it. Because I don't think that we've come to a point of perfectly balancing it yet. Um, you know, our academy as a whole is really only about three years old in the way that it's in its form now. Mm -hmm. Studio for years, um, you know, in California we got hit pretty difficult, you know, with the, the recession. Uh, and um, um, we were, you know, we are very highly paid portrait photographers. Our work sells for a lot. Uh, it, it's, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's well known, but we lost probably about 20%, 25% of our business overnight and at an average of four to $5,000 a portrait sale. <laughs> wow. That was, that was quite a bit. Yeah, we lost yeah. the mortgage agents, the contractors, the real estate agents. So anyway, we, we had had a number of... Uh, Clients that had purchased cameras, they didn't know anything about them, and uh, you know they had asked about learning, and we just had started with a couple small classes. And um, anyway, so so it, it kind of evolved, and then it just grew so quickly. So now we are in this balancing act. So I guess where I'm going with that, and in yeah. three years, it's gone from you know small classes to seminars with four or five hundred people in them sometimes to now these tours and. Um, it just happened so quick that uh, we kind of took it as it came, and and now the studio, you know, the balancing that we're trying to find now is is I'm not we are not pushing for studio portraiture. I mean, what comes in comes in, but where for a couple of years I was really hustling to mm -hmm. to get it to work to to you know because we still have lots of clients and lots of people with money. You just had to work harder to get it, you know, and now. What comes in comes in. We're just really passionate about what we're doing with these trips. Mm -hmm. and so, trying to stay really organized. Uh, when we're in town, we do the sessions and the selection, the sales process. And then I just have to stay really organized and 
submitting those to be printed and to order the right size frame to come in at the same time. And it's a lot of jargon, you know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Get, just, get, just get into yeah. kind of a rhythm of um, process when we're in town to get things done so that they'll, they'll, they will have been arrived at the studio when we get back from traveling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our organization. And balancing family. We have four children. Three are away. Uh, one is not. We have blended family. So he's with his mom or then back over here. But like, I just literally, I scheduled into the into the calendar, just crossed off a bunch of dates and you know, I'm taking him to Disneyland next week. And it was like, okay, I even, even though I travel a lot, I'm like, I have to get out of here. Yeah. Or right. otherwise I'll just, you know. You get sucked your, in otherwise. What? You're leaving your phone home, didn't I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I know I don't know. That's kind of, we, I don't know that we have the true answer on that. We're working towards it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, trying yeah. to find it, but it's it's going well, and you don't want to turn down stuff. You know, we love right. these trips. Are amazing. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 I do. I want to talk more about the trip, and I don't want to go down the sidetrack, but I think maybe this could be a discussion that we all have in the future, because we were just talking about this, of many photographers get into photography because they love it and they're passionate about it, um, but then they very quickly find themselves running the photography business side and balancing how much time the business yeah. side of things takes up. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, and we, we've talked to quite a few photographers that are like, I love to shoot weddings, but I hate the whole like booking and scheduling and talking to the bride. I just want to show up and shoot the wedding. And we, you know, there are parts of that that we feel the same too, but um, we like talking to yeah. the bride. That's and it's a, part. I mean, I think it's always a work in progress, yeah. right? It's a yeah. process, just yeah. finding that balance. Right. And sometimes it's better than others or easier or harder. So. Yeah. But, but I want to hear a little bit more about the trips. You've, you've, you've shared bits um, with me, but. Tell me a little bit more about um, where you go and, and what you do. <laughs> going next. Where are we going next? <laughs> well, we go all over, you know, and uh, and that just developed because we, we had always seen that as a possibility, and and uh, we started doing the trips about two years ago. Now we started with some one day trips, so to speak, like in San Francisco. Um, and just developed into three-day trips in the Yosemite, which developed into our first trip last uh, March, our first international trip uh, to Italy. And uh, so anyway, at this point, we've done Italy. Uh, we, we know Italy really pretty well, been there a number of times, but we've done Italy already as a, as a group. I've done Greece. Uh, a friend of ours uh, owned some land in Greece, and, and he went with us on that. And then we went over to Istanbul, Turkey from there, wow. which was interesting. Um, <laughs> and then uh, uh, just did Ireland. These are international ones. Uh, just did Ireland, which is amazing. Uh, we're getting ready uh, next month to head to Iceland uh, in August, and then we head to Italy again in the fall, which you guys are going to join us. So we're yes. totally excited about that. We're excited. We're really excited too. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And uh, in between all that, we have like. You know, like I said, one-day trips or three-day. We do like a spring Yosemite or a fall Yosemite trip. Uh, we also do uh, working, as you've seen some of the stuff we do with animals, we work with a trainer in Montana, uh, which is amazing. Uh, we get to photograph all kinds of incredible animals. Um, it's not like they're in a zoo. We're out up close, <laughs> personal. It's amazing. And uh, we do a couple trips working with the animals. One in Yellowstone uh, in the winter. We also do typically Moab, Utah. So there's all this going on, and we're always looking to do new stuff. We're already planning our January 2016 New Zealand trip. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Just to announce Czechoslovakia, Czech yeah. Right. Yes. Sorry. I did. We we actually we we, we had that one of the comments on the time. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We uh, um, and, uh, right now on these trips, uh, I would say that on every trip, there's about an eighty to eighty-five percent of the people that are on the next trip have been on a previous trip, and mm -hmm. they get those spots first. They are having such a great time that they. They want to know ahead of time when the next trip's being planned, so they can get in on it. So. I think that that's that. I mean, you guys must be really happy. It's obviously some really great feedback that these people, uh, it, you know, are getting something out of it and 
going again and again. Coming back, yeah. One of the things I think, uh, you know, I'm getting more confident in my f- uh, photographic abilities, but one of the things I've always kind of thought of looking at these trips, that they, they're, they seem a little daunting to me as far as like, going to show up and everybody's going to have a bigger camera than me and everybody's going to know, you know, immediately in their head when they want to switch four f-stops what that means and things like that. And so what kind of folks are going on on these trips? People with bigger cameras, but they don't know what an f-stop is. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, yeah. that's, these are anywhere from beginning, beginning. I literally have this DSLR in a box to... You know, people who have some more experience as serious amateur photographers Mm -hmm. and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are there to help in any way that is needed. Mm -hmm. And we help and answer questions. We also, we try to stretch people as far as uh, asking them, questioning them, um, you know, is that the right combination of choices for this exposure, for the scene? to the outcome of the photograph that you have in your mind's eye. And it's really great. We have a lot of participants that like to come repeatedly, but they also love our trips because um, some of them are single and they don't necessarily have a friend that would go with them and be patient while they stop (laughs) every five minutes to take a picture. (laughs) And we also have people that come without their spouse so that they can um, call it a class, not a separate vacation, but they have an opportunity to to go and their spouses are frustrated again because they're always stopping to take pictures every five minutes. And, and uh, we get that comment a lot. Like everyone's like-minded. Everyone likes to, to take pictures and take time to take pictures. Yeah. 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 But I, I would just to say on that too, just to add to that is that you know, I think one of the things that we've done that's been uh, really good is we, we've, we've decided, okay, so we, we also taught on the professional level and do teach on the professional level to, to our industry and all the big conventions and all that stuff. But, um, you know, working with the beginner, it's, it's definitely had its challenges in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, you kind of have to handhold people, and you'll see this when you go on a trip to, to Italy. Um, but it's really great. I mean, a lot of these people wouldn't travel on their own. They're nervous too. Uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, uh, but, and they love photography. And again, so they look at tours, but it's not really a photography tour. And most of the photography tours out there are for people, you know, you, you got to have some kind of idea what you're doing. If you go on with some of these big, I don't want to mention camera manufacturer trips, but you know, 20, 20 people, the one instructor, and you better know what an f-stop is and you know and what we've learned to do is prep people really well but be very patient with people and and uh allow them to see you know we always uh, Allie and i we always uh, really want people to understand that when they're on a trip um, to take time to see the world differently you know and uh, you know to take a moment take it in and then, and then capture that, and um, but see it differently, and slow down a little bit. And uh, I think what's happened is with with these beginning photographers, they're not so concerned about shooting for the next competition or shooting for a gallery. They're just just want to experience life, and they want to mm-hmm. experience travel, and they want to experience the hobby of photography. Mm-hmm. And they don't want somebody criticizing them every time they turn around. They just want help. And I think we've really been uh, able to to do that with people, and also amazing friendships have been born out of out of our, our, our classes. I mean, we have we have this one group of like four ladies, and they always call each other about the trips to try and get on the trip together so they can roommate together. And you know, that's all been born out of this. That's, that's really neat. That's so fun. Yeah. Really cool. You know. Yeah. 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 But it's daunting. <laughs> Twenty sure. people taking internationally is daunting let me just tell you it's it sounds amazing and it is amazing but it's not it's not easy and you're right I do work all the time you know because time changes time differences there's a tail going across your <laughs> yes I get a cat who's decided that he he wants to be part of the of the scene um, oh, so, <laughs> so so graceful um, 
<laughs> Liam, you're not doing anything for people who already don't like cats. Uh, uh, I think it, I, uh, traveling is daunting. I mean, we've done, yeah. uh, you know, just fun vacations and uh, just a little bit of international travel and just figuring out where we're going to be and what we're going to do for ourselves. Yeah, but it's, it's right. And it, it's way more daunting to just go on your own, right? you know, as opposed to like having people who know the place and know where to go and you can just kind of follow. Right. Um, and, and also I, you know, I can totally relate with what you guys have been saying about just being with like-minded people. Um, I've been to a couple of workshops in the past and nothing, you know, nothing like that where I get to travel really far, um, just like whole day workshops. And it's so refreshing to like meet people who speak the same language as you and are interested in the similar things as you. It's, it's just really cool to be, you know, with with people like that. Yeah, to spend so, time with people like that. Yeah. Right. But yeah, yeah, I mean, be, having somebody to guide you through all these new places, I think that's, yeah. that's really cool. And that's, a, and that's a big thing. I mean, we have some clients, we have some, some clients that are well-traveled too, but when I talk to them, they're like, look, you know, I'm busy, like I'm an executive, da, 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 and I love photography, this is my out, this is what I want to do, I don't, you know, um, in my busy life, and, you know, I just know that if I sign up, all I have to do, you know, they have to get their airfare to wherever we're going, we tell them where to go, where to be to start, and we'll meet them at the airport, but, you know, you know they're like, that's all I got to do, and I know once I get there, you know, all I have to do is just hang, have a good time, you guys tell me, hey, you know, this is what we're going to plan on today, and they don't have to make any arrangements, you know, and right. they just, they love that, and the price, I mean, our price is, like, like Bavaria, you know, two weeks of Bavaria in check. I mean, it's thirty nine hundred dollars. If you were to do that on your own, you that includes your hotel, that includes your transportation in in country, it includes all your instruction, it includes your breakfast, includes all the different tours we do, like Schwanstein Castle and all that. If you were to do that on your own, you would easily spend that much more if you stayed in the places that we stay in. But because we're able to work and get group rates, right. you can't do it and include all your instruction. Uh, yeah. Love that about it too, you know. Yeah. 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 Tell yeah. us what a day at a McKay workshop is like. Or on one of the trips. Yeah. Yeah. What's a day like? Yeah. An average day. <laughs> well, it depends. Is it Istanbul yeah. or is it Greece? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are differences. <laughs> yeah. Well, some days are bus more busy than others. Um, it just depends on where we're at. Okay? Okay. Sometimes we will shoot sunrise and rest midday to shoot sunset later on. And sometimes if we're um, changing hotels or traveling in between, um, it looks a little different. But um, <laughs> they're always full and no one ever goes home um, saying that they're not tired. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no McKay workshop is ever, I'm not tired. But with that said, again, different different trips. So, for instance, like Greece, uh, you know, one of the things that we want to do, even though, you know, Allie and I, as photographers, we're used to, like, go, go, go. we get these great shots. You know, get up at 5 to get a sunrise, you know. We're used to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but our clients are not, you know, uh, because, again, we're not, we're not working with, the, the most professional, not that we don't have some pros come, but for the majority of our clients. So, you know, what we like to do is, is kind of schedule it out where we're not changing hotels every day. We change like every couple days, probably two to three days. We'll get there and uh, we'll get up and we'll do a morning shoot, usually an afternoon off, you know, four hours, do whatever you want, rest, go shopping, kind of meet for an afternoon shoot and dinner. And then, in some places, like you'll see this in Italy, the best time to photograph Venice to me is at 11 o'clock at night. Everybody goes inside, there's no tourist out, and there's this life of Venice that's after the tourists are there, and that's to me the best time. So like we'll schedule that and say, now we're going out, you know, it's gonna be 11 o'clock, and we don't know where we're going. And what we say, what we do mean by that is we're gonna turn left and then right maybe, and maybe left, and maybe we don't know and we're always going to end up but you can do that with us and feel safe mm -hmm. and you can go if you decide to and if you decide not to that's no problem as well they you know people are given time flexibility and then a day off here and there where it's just a day off for shopping and, and also because 
we always have four or five instructors. So if we have 20 people on a trip with five instructors, it's always like a four or five to one ratio at any given time. And because of that, we might have um, four or five people that are going out this way and another four or five with another instructor going that way. And they can, people can kind of pick and choose what they want to do. And uh, our instructors and us, we just love to shoot. So people can always jump on and go and they want, if not, you know, for extra stuff. But right. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we also try to balance uh, some of the traditional type tours. Um, we work with an agent that actually tries to get us tours that aren't uh, the real cheesy kind of touristy tours, mm -hmm. but the depth kind of behind the scenes, interesting things. And generally when we move into a new area, um, she likes to schedule like a little overview of the area. Uh, it may be a tour, it may be a ride around the area. And um, after that, we branch out into going to photograph yeah. some different things. Yeah, like, like in Italy, you know, you go to Rome, you, you got to go to the Colosseum, you got to go to the Vatican, you know, and, and our, our people want to do that because, again, they're also tourists, so they're mm -hmm. not the pro photographer. And so it's this kind of marrying the tourism and the photography. And then, you know, what we try and do is, um, uh, or, or Florence, you know, everybody wants to see the Statue of David, you know. And mm -hmm. so we plan all that ahead of time so people get that touristy, uh, you know, we'll even tell people, look, today, right now, the next two hours, you're a tourist. You are just taking it in, enjoy it. Don't, don't get hung up on, you know, what lens choice and what perspective. And then there's times where it's like, okay, now, look, we're playing with F-stop. We're doing depth here. We're doing this. Uh, but, like, in Florence, we, we had to, you know, have a tour guide that um, – so when we see tour guide, I don't like that word tour guide, but she's a local. Mm -hmm. And she takes us to the some of the older areas of Florence. And one of the things that um, we do is, like Allie mentioned, we do that pre the, the full two days in Florence. And, and what we tell our clients is – you know, don't worry about capturing the great shots right now. Listen to what this tour person has to say or this guide has to say and let that fill your heart. Because if they're a good, a good tour guide, which is what we go for, they're going to speak passion, just like we speak passion in photography. They're going to speak passion about their city and their history. Yeah. And when you have that in your heart, that's going to come out creatively through your images rather than, oh, there's just another shot of, you know, right. whatever. Right. I, I want people to feel something mm -hmm. because photography is not only technical, it's emotional, right? It should be both those things. And if we can get people feeling the culture and the emotion, yeah. and maybe it's even starting and trying uh, a, a great Greek wine, you know, in Greece and, mm -hmm. and feeling that, that's going to go into your image making. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's how we try and blend it. Yeah. getting cool. passionate. It is. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's excited. Great time. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I just really like the, you know, the sunrise and sunset because when you travel with friends and family, usually you're doing everything midday, you know, and the light's always terrible and you end up at these places as a tourist and it's lovely, but pictures come out flat and it's full of people. But the, and you're eating dinner at sunset. That's right. You're eating dinner. and, and, and you know. sunset. Yeah. 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 So I just, I like that. Sounds great. Yeah. Sounds really good. Of course, yeah, I saw awesome. them. In Iceland, sunrise and sunset just blend. There's literally five hours of sunset light, then three hours of dark in August, and then three hours of sunrise, basically, two, two hours of sunrise. So I will tell you, Iceland is going to be like we're going, 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 sunrise, sleep yeah. on the bus. But it's a little different trip than some of our other ones. Now. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> sunrise, sunset, it's like five hours. It's, we're going out to shoot like at nine at night. We'll be done about two in the morning. Wow. wow. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we tried to get our animal trainer to bring the snow leopard to Iceland, but he no. wouldn't do it. No. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But just getting to photograph those animals in general, yeah, that's, you know. Yeah, that's incredible. It is cool as well. Cool. Good. Um, well, you know, we joked, we joked a little bit about um, bigger DSLRs, but I'm curious because, you know, we've got mirrorless cameras coming on strong. Are you seeing some of those on the trip? And what are your feelings about mirrorless? This is actually, a, a, I put out last week that I was going to be interviewing you all and if readers had any questions, and this was a question from the folks, is the mirrorless cameras, and what are your thoughts on those, and are you seeing them? We are seeing them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And I think they can be really neat for a lot of people, especially that don't want to carry the weight around. Yeah. My, my feeling is, so we have uh, one of our instructors, um, he can't decide on a camera, so he's got a Canon, you know, Canon 60, he's got a Nikon D, I don't know, 7000, and then he's got the new Sony mirrorless, the really awesome one, mm -hmm. and um, and he uses all three. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the thing that... Uh, the thing that they're great, I mean, the quality for the size of what they are, you know, uh, especially some of these new systems like Sony, the technology that's out right now, it's, it's phenomenal, and yeah. it's so lightweight. I think that for the person that's doing a trip like this with us, um, that can set up on a tripod as well and, 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 you know, take some time with the camera and the settings, I think they're great. Mm -hmm. I think for the person, I'm not saying the technology's not there yet, but... The person that's trying to do action, like uh, the wildlife uh, yeah. work we do, and like when we go to Tanzania or sports, it's a lot more difficult because you're, you know, you're not dealing with the viewfinder situation. And even with Sony's new electronic viewfinder, um, I think people can get used to that. I've tried it, and I'm like, I feel like I'm in the Terminator. You know, it's just like I just don't feel like I'm part of the real moment. Uh -huh. So. For me, I, I think it's an awesome thing. I just, I think it's going to apply to the photographer. Certain photographers are going to be like, this is perfect for them. And yeah. for others, it's going to be, you know, it doesn't fill their needs quite yet. But yeah. as far as quality that I'm seeing, just the finished image, I, I think they're amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've been really impressed. Yeah. Yeah. And See, it's, it's, uh, yeah, and similar, similar. I feel the same way about the action. I think that's one place where some of the focusing systems are still amazing, but that electronic viewfinder yeah, you know, just has just a little yet. bit of a hesitation, just a tiny bit more than you know, seeing it right through the street, through the glass. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a, I saw this, there's a follow-up of that. But. And that's, yeah, I feel like that's something that we never really talked about or, or really thought about that much just you know we've talked about DSLRs versus mirrorless and we talk about the viewfinder and the differences but that that point in particular I think is yeah well something. They, there's strength and weaknesses yeah. Right? yeah 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 but I mean I don't think you can beat it if you're if you're doing landscape and you don't want and you know backpack packing you know and you don't want to carry oh, yeah. a lot of gear yeah man the quality that you're getting for the weight and and the lens quality that these companies like Sony and Olympus and Panasonic have are, are amazing. Yeah. I just think for, for me, as a sports and action guy, yeah, you know, it's it, well sometimes sports and action for that those purposes mm -hmm. it just doesn't doesn't work for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and for us for weddings when we're working, you know, we need to be able to have. I guess not not that electronic viewfinders are unreliable, but I just feel like that constant being able to see everything that's happening through the viewfinder is pretty essential. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, get, they get noisy and low light, too, another downside. Yeah. But they're getting better. Yeah. Cool. It takes a little bit of the feeling away of, the, of what you're creating. Like, I can't, if that makes sense, I can't feel, you know, the what I want to feel in here when I'm looking through an electronic view. Finder, if that makes yeah, any sense. I can. Yeah. I can probably see that. You know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Do you kind of gear? Well, yeah, gear related. Do you do you all have a favorite lens, or or maybe even broader than that, a, a favorite focal length that you shoot with, or does it really depend? Probably. In What's your favorite f stop? <laughs> what was that? What's your favorite f stop? What's your favorite f stop? Sure. <laughs> 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 My passion is infrared. I have oh. the DSLR that's been converted to infrared. Yep. And I'm pretty much 95% of the time I'm shooting that with a wide angle. Wow. Nice. And a full yeah. frame. Full, full frame infrared. Mm -hmm. Full frame, yeah. So, that's cool. Yeah, she, she, Allie will take, like, we just got a new 5D Mark III. We have another one, but we just got a new one as well. And then she'll take that one too because everything that we get is Allie's first. <laughs> but then she doesn't use it she shoots like five shots even though she took it and I couldn't use it <laughs> so because she loves her infrared and it's amazing oh we gotta send you some disc of ours on that stuff too but um yeah uh, some piece. but um yeah and so she's wide angle and I find again I think it depends on the application when I'm walking around like well in Greece uh 
I from uh, Lumoid actually. I I actually got uh, the fourteen fixed, fourteen millimeter fixed. Very wide. And I, and I was in love. Yeah. yeah. My, because I love wide angle, but it is amazing. So sharp, beautiful yeah. lens. Shot the entire Greece and Istanbul trip. The entire two weeks with that lens. I didn't change mm-hmm. lenses. Wow. But I was wow. shocked. I kind of forced myself on the fixed lens. <laughs> yeah. And I forced myself to move versus just to zoom in or zoom out a little bit, you know. Yeah. And it was, it was good creatively. Um, mm-hmm. So I love that lens. Um, but in our bag, I mean, I have a 16 to 35 wide uh, Canon L lens. I love that. And I, um, I have a 24-105 I, meaning we... <laughs> 24 105 uh, and then um, those are the two those are my two go-to lenses that I shoot 90 actually on any given trip if it's not animals or sports those are the lenses I have I have one of those on and the other in my in a small shoulder bag so I'm lightweight uh, and uh, oh and we have an, another favorite lens oh yeah we do <laughs> I forgot the 85 millimeter 1.2 yeah, we rented that and then had to buy that. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, at, at weddings, at weddings and and for portrait work, I think that that lens is on Christina's camera. Night, the well, whole time. The whole time. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> Pretty Almost much. the whole time. There, you got there's, no, there's nothing like it. it. And I have to. Allie just gives me such a hard time because she had to have that lens, and I was like, we don't need it. It's two thousand dollar lens. Twenty. We don't need it. And, no, yeah, but you no, do I, need it. You do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't use it on trips because it's so heavy again, and it's yeah. fixed, so heavy. But for, um, like, I shoot a lot of concert photography now as well, you know. So I'm, I'm involved in all lots of stuff, but uh, there, even with a portrait or a couple or a wedding, there's something, if you shot an 85 on your focal length with the 24 to 105 or 70 to 200, if you put those at 85 and then you shot the 85 at yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, you there's, and it's not even, and I'm not even talking about the 1.2. I'm just talking about the quality of the image. Yeah. yeah. There, it, there's a definitely a difference to the quality of image you get out of it. Um, yeah. Shoot them all at f4, and it wouldn't matter. The 85 by itself is going to, to meet the others. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's quite amazing. I will, and I will just say for folks listening, I think a lot of folks are shooting with crop sensors. The new Sigma 50 1.4. Um, yes. achieves it's that amazing. is amazing and, yeah. and would be what I would recommend for them over the 85 yeah um, yeah yeah we've been yeah, really happy with that. that that would be yeah. really good I, yeah, I, nice I, I do encourage people though um, you know on the wide angle side one of the things we find on our trips is that most of, these, most of our clients have not worked with a wide angle lens mm-hmm. uh, you rent them a lot you know we work with Lumoid as you guys know yep. um, they're great in fact Zachary from Lumoid's going on or he's been on trips with us he's going on our Italy trip as well uh, yep. good yeah and uh, you know we encourage people to go with a wide angle lens uh, and what we find is they put it on and because it sees so much view they're not used to everything in it and you know they're most people when they're beginning they're like you know, there is a tree, and they zoom in, or there is a waterfall, and they zoom right. in, and um, they haven't really learned how to uh, allow people to walk in uh, through their image a little bit to their main subject. So one of the things I love about wide angle, and that I would encourage your viewers, especially because I know there's a lot of beginning and amateur photographers, is to work in that wide angle realm and work with uh, what I call, again, taking a journey through the photograph where people, you know, uh, rather than here's the waterfall and just center it up, you would actually use foreground to walk into that image and walk through the image and the destination is the waterfall. And uh, I think what it does is it, I, I tell people, you know, think about it like this. You're at a, at a place that's, you know, you see it, but now you're going to show that to somebody and it's going to be a two-dimensional piece now. Right. You were there. You were feeling it. You were sensing everything you saw walking up to it. So what if you could show somebody on a piece of paper and allow them to walk and step right into that photograph and move into it and walk through that will help them emotionally. And so I would just encourage people I know with crop sensors to look at those, you know, 10, 11 millimeter uh, ranges. I know for us, I have a lot of people we've recommended the Tokina 11 yes. to 16 to 8. It's fantastic. Yep. 
I just I just did a wide angle comparison and the Tokina is still my pick when you need that wide aperture. To say the new Canon, the little 10 to 18 is 299. It's very yeah. good, very sharp, no chromatic aberration. Downside starts at f4.5, so you don't get that low light capabilities with moving subjects, but it does have IS. But um, I don't want to get too geary. But yes, those, one of those two lenses is going to do it for folks for wide angle. And I think David, we do uh, photo assignments from time to time. I think David just outlined a future one of that kind oh, of like, yeah. you know, because we've done, we've done what we call recently called double take, where we feel like folks were capturing this kind of big touristy scene. But what, what was your subject within that? And take another picture that really focuses in on your subject. I like coming back wide in a future assignment and saying, lead us to your subject. Yeah, I like yeah. that I, you put it really perfectly, or just, you know, how to tell people. I think he teaches photography it. every once in a while. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that's good. Good, that's good. I think this, this has been great. I think I, uh, the wrap-up question? Yeah. You want to ask? Yeah, you go. Okay. So, so both of you are experienced photographers, successfully running a business. Is there anything that you wish you knew back at the beginning that would have been really helpful? <laughs> all of it, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all man. Years of... Get paid up front for weddings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The money's yeah. usually gone after the wedding. So. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I think, I mean, there's so much, there's been so much learning. I mean, 20, we've been doing this. It's hard to believe, but uh, each of us has been working in the industry now almost like 27 years. Together, only about eight, but 27 years. And along that way, especially being a portrait wedding photographer, then moving into the educational side like this. I mean, there's just been lots of things that we've had to learn as we go. Um, I didn't realize how much work it would be. I mean, you mentioned photographers because, you know, and I'm sure many of the viewers watching right now, you, you have a camera, maybe you've started a business or thinking of starting a business. And, and we found that, you know, of course, in the digital age, people get a camera and all of a sudden they're a photographer, you know, and, I always joke and I say, well, you know, if you gave me a scalpel, you don't want me operating on you, you know, <laughs> and I understand. And, and so I, I, well, when I started, if people hadn't come alongside me and encouraged me, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So I have no problem with people getting a camera and getting into the business. In fact, we've had people tell us, why are you helping all these, you know, soccer moms? And we're like, because somebody helped us once mm -hmm. and the next soccer mom might be the next who knows what photographer. I mean, just we, that's one of the things I love about what we do is giving people um, joy and, and finding what their passion is. So I have no problem with that. But I would say with that is, you know, go learn, get involved in your local organizations, get involved in PPA or WPPI on the, on those sides, you know, your local um, uh or professional organizations on that side. I think that was one of the things that for so long I didn't do that if I had done, I wouldn't have gone through so many heartaches in certain situations. Yeah, yeah. That is true. And also I think one of the, the best things that we do as a photographer couple is when we're working with our clients, we, we try to make it a really amazing experience for them. And we are genuinely interested in who they are and hearing about who they are and who their kids are. And we, we take some time to sit and talk with them first and, and just to try, to try to see into who they are a little bit before we start to photograph them. And I yeah. think it really does help yeah. in capturing yeah. their true yeah. family or individual. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, yeah, as a whole, just anybody that's out there and they're just, you know, wanting to move forward in this. I mean, all of these things, it's a journey, you know, it, but it is work. Uh, it, you definitely, you know, we complement each other as I know you guys do, you know, like I'm really good at marketing 
and I'm also an artist. Allie's really good at some technical stuff, and she's also an artist. You put those things together for us, it's been great. But, yeah. you know, it's it's if you want to go into the business, you got to learn business. And you have to understand that it's not all just pushing a shutter. It is, there's 80 times as much administrative work as there is all the other stuff, you know. And uh, these trips have proven that to me once again, you know, and, and how much work goes into behind the scenes. But, um but when it all comes down for, for both, I'm speaking for both of us here, but we do it because we love photography. I mean, we truly, truly love photography. Um, I would have burned out, and I, I've gone through stages of that, but I would have burned out long ago if I didn't love photography, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And, uh, and people. And people, mm -hmm. most of the time. No, no, we love people. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, you know, uh, just, I, I just want to share one little last thing on this and why, what's some of the thing that keeps keeps us ticking. We we have a gal right now uh, that, that just signed up for a trip. She's never been on a trip. She, she came across us on the Internet, um, and, and I called her and I started talking to her, and, and she's uh, about 60 years old. She's never traveled, and uh, she said she loves photography, and she saw we were going to the Bavarian countryside. And as I started to talk to her, I could tell she was getting a little bit choked up. And she mentioned to me that her husband had just passed away mm -hmm. and she's sitting in the home and just sitting there, you know. And she saw this. She came across her class somehow and I led her to her website. And they had always dreamed of seeing New Schwanstein Castle together. Mm -hmm. And they had never, they never made that trip. And, um, you know, as she talked to me, it, it and this is this is one story of many, you know, but as she talked to me, I was able to say to her, you know, um, one, I'm sorry for, for all your loss and what you're going through, but um, I'm really glad you found us. And, and because you can go on this trip, you can enjoy photography, you're going to meet other people that have been through similar situations, you're going to develop some friendships, and... You're gonna to go to Nick Schwanstein, and your and your husband's gonna be there with you. He may not be there physically, but he's gonna be there with you. And I said, I and I told her, I said, I just want to thank you for Allie and I both that you're trusting us with this. And um, you know, guys, when it all comes down, I mean, as photographers, we get to capture this journey, this human journey, you know. And if if for Allie and I, beyond just capturing it, but if we can help others. Uh, on their journey, and, 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 and they don't have to be the next pro, but if they can just enjoy it and right. capture moments and live a little bit more because of something we're doing, man, that's like the best. That stuff just keeps me going with this stuff. It really does. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Yeah. I think that is that's a so wonderful good. note to end on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, that's great. And, and uh, you know, just, yeah. Very nice. Oh, where, where, so, um, where can folks find more of your work and more information about these trips? Sure. Well, uh, they can go to our website, which is mckaylive.com. That's yep. our academy website. I'll put a link right down below for anybody watching. Yeah, and when they go to the link, uh, you know, I know people are nervous to sign up for email lists and all that kind of yep. stuff, but the thing is, is if they sign up for our email list, before we announce a trip, a lot of times on our Facebook, so they should go to our Academy Facebook as well. We might throw a little glib out there that something's coming. Uh, but when they're on our email list, uh, they get ahead of the general public before it's put on our website. Free notification list. Yeah. That they can find, uh, sign up for on mckaylive.com. Yeah, the pre notification this, this list, yeah, when they sign up for that, they get, and, and to give you an idea, like the Bavarian trip, I mean, it's sold out in 48 hours, you know, and so the people that get on that list usually have first chance by a day or two to get in on a trip. And uh, so that would be my recommendation. Of course, they can always email or call us. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, you know, we just love sharing what we do. So just like you, I know Toby that that, that was a thing that kind of connected us was that I found you on YouTube and it was like, okay, here's somebody that is truly passionate about this. It's not just, you know, a way to make a dollar or whatever, you know, and then hearing about Christina and I knew it was very similar. And it, again, it goes back to photography just being a wonderful thing. So I'm yeah. glad we connected. And I, yeah, I'm me too. To share with your, your viewers today. Yeah. Great. And Allie, how about how about your work? And your, do you have a, a gallery of infrared work up somewhere? 
Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be put yeah, on. Yes, so. Ellie. Yes, Ellie. <laughs> They're done. I just need to get them on now. And, and I'll get that up right on that part. Okay. <laughs> okay. She does have a DVD of her work, though. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's the stories behind the image uh, uh, that's amazing. And uh, any of the viewers that want to see that, they can email. We'll give them a really special. We'll give them the, the camera at Toby Ray. You know, we'll give them okay. a great. But it's amazing, and then a lot of that. Yeah, I yeah. can I can share some with you too if you want to include any. Yeah. Any okay. Images. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, you guys can send along in the future, and oh, for folks watching, you know, the neat thing about YouTube is I find people watch podcasts from two, three, four months ago, and then write and respond to stuff, you know, um, today, and so we'll put a link down there um, at some point for the future. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank cool. you so thank you both so much. This was wonderful, um, and I think uh, it was just it was just a lot of fun to talk to you both. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. You're a lot like us, aren't they? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> what was that? Sarah, you guys are a lot like us. Yeah, you, like Christina, and you and I can see it. Okay, I look forward to having a great glass or three of wine with you guys coming up in Italy too. Us too. Say, us too. That We're sounds so good. looking forward yep. to it. It's good. We were, awesome. we were running through the Italian words we know the other day, and there weren't Not many. Not very many. And then a few <laughs> hours later, we're walking down the street, and Christina's like, gelato, gelato. <laughs> <laughs> Vino, gelato. Vino, gelato. I was mostly just excited about the prospect of eating gelato in Italy. Yeah, sounds good. That, that was about it. Yeah. But we photographed a wedding where the bride's family was Italian, um, and just last weekend. Yeah, just last weekend. And so a lot of them were speaking Italian. And we came to the realization that we don't speak any Italian <laughs> at all. So it's no. going to be interesting. We're going to we start learning. brush up That's or right. not brush up. Duolingo. In general. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Take care, Thank guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. So we had a fabulous time talking to them. I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, as I said, we'll be back next week here in the U.S. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Go out, take some fireworks pictures. Feel free to link to any fireworks pictures you take down in the comments below. I'd love to see them. Maybe do a little slideshow next week of fireworks photos. And uh, thanks. Bye-bye.